Okay, so we have this question about uh, derivatives, about the derivative of this function, just this example function, not that this, this came up on a test or anything, or on a quiz. Um, this is y is equal to pi minus theta over 3. Um, so this is y is a function of theta here, and pi and 3 are constants. And so the question was, why is, why is y prime going to be negative 1 over 3, and not, and not, what is it, uh, negative pi over 3. Shouldn't y prime be negative pi over 3? And the answer is no. Of course, this is, this is not the derivative, but the question is why. Um, and I remember, I remember wondering about stuff like this when I started calculus. It's one of those sort of subtleties, and we have, we have to be very careful about this. Um, when, when I have something like y is, y is equal to pi minus theta over 3, this can actually be rewritten as pi over 3 minus theta over 3, right? These things have a common denominator here. So I can split this up. And now it becomes clear that, that y prime is pi over 3 prime minus theta over 3 prime. Right? We know that this is one of those, those derivative rules that uh, nobody ever pays attention to because it seems obvious, but then um, it comes in handy in situations like this. I know that if h of x is equal to f of x plus g of x, then h prime of x is, is f prime of x plus g prime of x. Right, the the derivative of the sum of two functions is the sum of the derivatives, and the same thing for differences. I should I should have put uh, plus minus here, um, and so this this is a case of of this being a sum of two functions. The the constant function, the constant function pi over three, and then this linear function of theta negative theta over three. And what is the derivative of a constant? Well, it's just zero. Constants, the derivative is the rate of change. Constants don't change, they remain constant. And then the derivative of negative theta over three, that is, that is the derivative of negative one over three times theta. This is a line. This thing, of course, is a line in the y theta axis, which has a slope of negative one over three. So it will, it will have a y-intercept of zero and it will have a slope of negative one over three. And let me, let me make it a little bit, look a little bit more like it actually has that slope. Maybe I'll tilt this a little bit. Of course, I can just put in the, I can just put in the, okay, and I'm gonna stop trying to tilt this. It's supposed to spin, but, oh, there we go. Ha <laughs> ha, okay. So the idea is that, is that if you go, if you look at the slope of this thing, right, um, if you go over by one, you go down by one over three, right? Um, it, it has a slope of negative one over three. It goes through the origin when theta is equal to zero. This is the this is the theta axis. This is the y axis. Um, the uh, the thing is the value of the function is zero. That is a line that has a constant rate of change of negative one over three. So its instantaneous rate of change anywhere is going to be negative one over three. So the derivative of this thing, this is negative one over three. And so that, even though it might look, it might look from, from this, like the, the derivative should be, should be pi over three. Um, actually, if we break it up like this into the sum or difference in this case of these two functions, um, the, the derivative is actually going to be uh, negative one over three. So, so hopefully, hopefully this cleared that up.